top we're on Membov. At the bottom, it's 166. Okay, we're going to start uh, four lines from the end of the page. Okay, the Alter Rebbe explains. Last week, we gave a review and learned more. But the Alter Rebbe explains the purpose of creation was a to transform darkness into light, to, to break darkness, transform into light. That purpose was not for the higher worlds. The higher worlds are only revelations of godliness, not the essence. The essence of godliness could only be revealed, and this is the purpose of creation. The purpose of creation is that they have a data that Hashem wants his revelation of godliness, the essence of God down here in this world. Now, that could only be by the neshama coming into the world, by the neshama coming into the world, then the neshama is able by transforming the darkness, the neshama is able to accomplish that mission. And he started saying a little bit of that, similar to that, happened by Matan Taira. They heard the voices from all sides. Ata Reisa Ladas, you know, uh, Hashem showed us to know, but it's still not what it's going to be when Mashiach comes. So in the fact, four lines in the bottom of the page, Alter Rebbe is explaining why by Matan Torah it happened like that. And Hashem revealed His essential will. In the Ten Commandments. Which is the generalization of the entire Torah. Okay? Because we know, the Psad Yugon writes, that in the Aseris Adibris, there's 620 letters in the whole Ten Commandments. There's 620 letters corresponding with the 613 biblical mitzvahs and the seven rabbinic mitzvahs. Okay? And therefore, in fact, Rav Sadi Goin shows every mitzvah in the Torah of the 613 where it's connected to in the Ten Commandments. And it's called the Hazardus of the Psadi Goyim. So that is the generalization of Teda. Or as Al Rebbe said in Perek Chof, Anechi is a source of all positive mitzvahs. I am God, you God. Lo'yi elocha, that you should not have any other gods. That's the source of all negative commandments. Okay? So he says, because that's the generalization of Teda. Which is Pneumius Ritzene Yisbarat, which is the real will of Hashem. It's not the external will, it's the essential will of Hashem. The ancient has to pun him cloud, and in Teda, there is no concealment of godliness. Like it says, Kiba'er Panecha, in the glory of your face, Nasata Lono, we say this to Hashem. You gave us Teda's Chayim, we say it in Shmanesi every day, three times a day. Because that was the pneumius of Hashem's will, when Hashem gave the Torah to the Jews and the Jews heard it directly from Hashem himself, they become completely bottled, completely, they're, like he's going to explain, their existence ceased to be. The neshamas popped out of their body. Why did the neshamas pop out of the body? Because it was too great of a re revelation for them. Kamaimer Azal, like the Gemara says, I'll call Dibur Parchanish Mosul. Every word that came out of Hashem's mouth, the revelation was so great that the Nishamas popped out of the body. After Matun Teda, we learned last week, after Matun Teda, because now we have Teda, which is called the strength. Hashem is Labayit and Hashem gives us strength. Now we're able to handle that revelation of godliness when Mashiach comes, especially by Tchiyas HaMesim, because now we have the vessel and the strength to be able to handle it. By Matan Teda, they weren't keeping mitzvahs here. They just got him. So by Matan Teda, it was such a great revelation that the is popped out of the body. Hashem put the soul back into the body. With the dual, 
with the dude that Hashem, it says in the Medrash, how is Hashem going to resurrect the dead? With the do that he created to resurrect the dead. Vutal Teira, which is the do of Teira, which is called A's, which is called string. So let me explain this do story a little bit. There's do and there's rain. Both are <coughs> water from above, so to speak. What's the difference, though, between, practically speaking, between rain and dew? Rain, we read in the Shema, is dependent on our behavior. In the second paragraph of Shema, we say, Im Shema tishmu, if you listen, then, I'll give you rain properly, and, the, you know, and then, what happens? Be careful if you stop listening to Hashem. Then he's going to hold back the heaven. And then won't be rain. So Chazal tell us that rain, the Pasuk tells us, rain is dependent on our behavior. We behave, we get rain. We don't behave, we don't get rain. The Gemara says, Tal do never stops. No matter what the behavior of the Jews are or is, the do will always be. That's what the Medrash says. Mario says. So Chassidus explains why. Why? So Chassidus explains rain comes from a level of godliness where behavior matters. We said many times, in relationships, behavior really matters. If you're nice to somebody, you're their friend. You're a friend. You're mean to somebody, you're not a friend. Okay? Friends can come and go. Even in marriages, spouses, marriage depends on behavior. If you're nice to each other, you have a marriage. If you're not nice to, to each other, you may be living in the same house, but you don't have a marriage. Marriage is a relationship that depends on behavior. There are certain relationships, for instance, like we said, parents and children. It doesn't matter whether you behave or not as far as being more child or less child. There's no difference. There's no difference you're not more child if you behave. You're not less child if you don't behave. Why? Because that is an essential bond that is not dependent on behavior. Sidis explains, you know, when the man fell from heaven, okay, so the Pasuk says there was shikhva satal, there was a layer of dew under the man, and there is a layer of dew over the mud. By the way, which is one of the two reasons why we cover the chalice Friday night, from underneath and from on top. Why? Because the Lecha mission represents the mud, the two chalice represent the double mud, and the mud had covering from above and below. With what? With Tao. The Gemara says, Tao, like he's quoting here from the Gemara, the Gemara says in Shabbos, when he speaks that when I'll call Diba Vidiba Parchin Ishmasan, when Hashem spoke, then the Hashem is popped out of the body, and the Gemara says, How did Hashem bring them back? He had to resurrect them with the do that he's eventually going to resurrect the dead with. Why? What's this union of do? Do comes from a much greater source. Then rain does to the extent it's not dependent on behavior. That's why when Yitzchak blessed Yaakov, we say every Saturday night, he said, <clears throat> What should Hashem give you? Mital Hashemai. He didn't say from the rain of the heavens. Tal is a much deeper level. So the Altarev is saying here as follows The revelation is ultimately going to be when Mashiach comes. 
How are we going to handle it? Because Hashem gives us the title, which is a strength to be able to handle that revelation. The similar, not the same way, but similar to that was a little bit by Matan Teira. Because there was a super great revelation of Anoich Hashem Alakecha, the premius, the essence of Hashem. Anoichi was revealed in Matan Teira. So therefore the soul couldn't handle it because they didn't have the strength of Teira yet. So Hashem had to resurrect them with the dude that he's going to resurrect the dead. And that's called the Tau Teira, the do of Teira, which is A's, which is strength. Kamaimer is all like the Chazal tell us, Kola Eisig but Teira. Whoever occupies himself in Teira will be revived. Tau Teira Mechayehu. The, the do of Teira, meaning the strength of Teira is going to resurrect him. So what happened by Matan Teda? By Matan Teda was a phenomenal revelation of godliness. So what happened? Where is it? What happened? He said, Afterwards, the Chet Eitzadah's cause, to the extent that the world and the Jews became coarse, became uh, gross, so to speak, uh, add eight k to yamim until the time of Mashiach. So let me explain this also a little bit. It's connected to the passion we read last Shabbos. When Hashem created the world, Hashem has plans. <laughs> Hashem does everything for a reason. Hashem created a perfect world. Perfect. You can imagine, but Hashem did it. He did it right the first time, and he did a perfect job. The world was created perfect. What was the problem? Hashem said, okay, I created a perfect world. Big deal. Of course, I'm God. Of course, I can create a perfect world. What does Hashem want? That people should do it. He wanted a dealer betachtein. He wanted a dwelling place down here. Now, how do you get people to perfect the world that's already perfect? So what do you got to do? You got to break it. You got to ruin it. You got to bust it. You know, like, before a baby is born, the malach comes and teaches him the whole turn off. And then he gives him the thing, a whack under the nose, and schnell into the nose, it's called in Yiddish, and he forgets all the turn now he says, go do it on your own. Yeah. So the question is, why teach him the Torah if he's going to forget it? What's the purpose of it? So Siddhis explains, the purpose of it is the fact that the person had it as a gift from above, that gives him the power that afterwards he could do it on his own. Because Hashem already gave him that power from the beginning. And the same thing here. Hashem created a perfect world. But Hashem didn't want a perfect world that he made. He wanted a perfect world that we make. Hashem created a perfect world. What did he tell the Jews to do? Hashem bara lakim lases. The Medrash says, lesakim. God says, I created the world for you to fix. So what did Hashem do? This is all planned. Neira lila b'nei adam. Hashem made it happen. Adam Arishan sinned in the Eitz Adas. Why did he sin? He had to break the perfect world. Now Hashem said to him, okay, now you go do it yourself. And there's a process, like we learned in the past. There had to be Nayach and the flood, and there had to be Avram, and there had to be Yitzhak, and there had to be Yaakov, and there had to be Golis Mitzrayim, and then they're able to go not and take. I'm cutting and making it short. What happened by Matan Teira? The Zayar says, Matan Teira undid the Chetzadas. It undid it. So now there is a perfect world. Who did it? Mankind. Yidin. By accepting Teira, Matan Teira undid the Chetzadas. Lashin the Zaya and the Medrash Paska Zua Masam, their impurity, their filth, Zuamas like sweat, their, their it stopped. 
Matan Teda brought the world back to the way it was at the beginning. What's wrong with that? He said, I don't like it. Why? Because the Jews by Matan Teda were tzaddikim. He came out of Egypt, newborn babies. They prepared 49 days for the counting the Emer for Matan Teda. It comes Matan Teda, the Jews are perfect. Yeshikoyach. Tzaddikim. S-O-S-O. -S -O. Same old, same old. Hashem said that's wonderful. It undid uh, the Chatei Tzadak. Hashem said, but you know what the problem with that is? It's only at tzaddik level. I need something greater. It's called the Balchuba level. How do you get Jews to do a Balchuba level? You got to get them to do a major sin. So what did Hashem do? In, because a Chet Egel doesn't make sense how the whole thing happened. The Chet Egel Hashem planned to make the world back to Eitz Adas. That's what it says in the Zayat. The Chet Egel was the same sin as the Eitz Adas. And therefore Hashem says, just like Eitz Adas, the consequences of the Eitz Adas were permanent, having to work, childbearing, all that stuff was forever. So Hashem says, Anytime I'm going to get angry at the Jews, I'm bringing up the eagle. Do you think it's a one-time thing with Shuba? No. The passage says in Parashat Kisis, Hashem said to make sure the day Today, I'm going to get angry at you guys for whatever reason it is. I'm going to bring up the eagle. The eagle is as bad as Eita does. So what happened? Again, this is part of the plan. So then the Jews did tshuva. They did tshuva. Now in Kenyon Kippur, they got the second luchis. Unbelievable. Baal tshuva teira. Baal tshuva luchis. And the Medrash says, if we would only have had, if they didn't break, if Meshav Rabbeinu didn't break the luchis, we would have only chumish with a little bit more stuff. All the title we have today is because of Luchas Shmias, because Moshe Rabbeinu broke the Luchas. And that's why Simchas Taylor is after Yom Kippur and all these things. It's a whole system. Okay, so the Jews did Shuva and, and they, Hashem forgave them. So, and Hashem told them, build a Mishka. Build a Mishka. Very good, very nice. God rested there. What was the problem with the Mishkan? Again, I'm just jumping through thousands of years, but there's each each day is a system. Hashem said, this is a temporary house. I don't want this. I want a permanent house. Hashem said, build me a base of Migdash. Build a base of Migdash. Hashem said, you know what? I need something better than that. Destroy the first, first base of Mikdash. Create a second base of Mikdash. Okay? Then Hashem destroyed the second base of Mikdash. And for the last 2,000 years, we're in Golis because of that. Why? Why is this Golis longer, harder, more difficult, more suffering? That the 70 years between first base of Midrash and second base of Midrash, this is 2,000 year Golos. The answer is because this final Golos is to prepare the world, the darkness, the deed of the lowest of the lowest is after Chudn Bayashen. There was never such suffering ever like the Jews suffered. In, in the programs and the, the crusaders and all the, throughout history till today, the Jews suffered terribly. Real chayshech, ultimate darkness. What's the purpose? To bring data of the Who Taylor, like he says, breaking evil, transforming evil. Then, because we're so, it's such a low time. And nevertheless, Jews are doing Torah mitzvahs. 
that will eventually bring the ultimate revelation of the essence of Hashem, which will be by Tchis HaMais. That is the ultimate essence of Dira V'tachtenim, and that's how the Rebbe is going to say in the beginning of Perek Lamed Zayin. So let's see now what he says inside. Rak <laughs> Achekach, 92 on the top, uh, five lines on top of the page. Rak Shachekach, Gorem Achet, the sin. So they had this great revelation of Matan Torah. The sin caused, V'nez Gash Mohen Ba'elam, the world became corrupt and coarse in the world. At Eis Keta Yomim till the time of Mashiach. Shaaz is Dacher Gashmi Sagufa Ha'ilam. Then to the Torah mitzvahs that we do throughout ages, the world and the physical body of the person will become refined. The Yochel Lekaba Gili Erd Hashem. And then we're going to be able to handle this essential revelation, Dira, in Dachtainim, Shayoy Li Yisrael. Ayyadeh HaTeda, that will be illuminating to the Jews through Teda, which is called Ace. There is called Ace. So we're going to have the strength to do it. And then he says, And from the leftover, from the extra light to the Yidden, it will give them also, it will overflow to the um, God, darkness of the Gentiles will also be lit up. He said, like it says, the Goyim will go follow your light. Or like it says, the house of Yaakov come and go Hashem, in the revelation of Hashem. And it says, the glory of Hashem will be revealed. But all kabasa yacht of all flesh will see the greatness of Hashem. And it says, love it to the extent that they're going to have to go benikre tatsurim in the clefts in the holes of the rocks of see of see from a cellar, like it says in the English, the clefts of the boulders, because of the fear and, and awe and, and awesomeness of Hashem. Like it says, like far badar goinu zecho, it should shine the from the glory of your strength. Akol yeshvi sevul artzecho. This we say in the Roshanim Kippur davening before before Akel Hakadosh that the whole world will see the greatness of the Jew. Who does this? Who does this? Dira betachtainim. We do. How do we do it? Because Hashem gave us this golos, especially. And therefore, by the way, you have to look at everything from a positive point of view. Yes, we want Mashiach, and yes, we want all that stuff. There's no question. But why is Hashem keeping us a day longer in golos? Because Hashem has a mission that we didn't accomplish yet. To reveal this essential essence of Hashem. Okay, Dira Latsmuse, that Dira, the dwelling place of the essence of Hashem. In this physical world, every day in Golos, we're getting closer to a greater revelation of godliness than we had the day before. That's the looking at everything in a positive perspective. Of course, Golos is sick and Golos is not normal and Golos is crazy and, and we don't want Golos. But what Hashem does is for the good. Because now we can have a greater connection with Hashem by doing more Taylor mitzvahs in Golos than when we don't have Golos. Okay, that's the end of Paraklamid. We'll just start Paraklamid Zayn. Chapter 37. This ultimate completion and fulfillment of Yemei Samashiach Vitchir Samesim of the days of Mashiach and the resurrection, which is Gili Erdein Tzav Baruch the revelation of the essence of Hashem, not the revelation of Hashem, the essence of Hashem. Ba'elam azah gashmi in this physical world, toloi b'ma'aseinu v'avidaseinu is dependent on our actions and our avaydah 
called Zman Meshech HaGolos to the duration of Golos. And the Rebbe explains in the Maimah, what's the Alt Rebbe used both expressions, Maaseinu Vavid Yoseinu. Maaseinu means their actions of mitzvahs. Aveda, Aveda Seinu, comes with the word Evid. That means when it's difficult to do it. It's not enough just doing mitzvahs. That's Maaseinu. Aveda Seinu. Aveda a definition is when you work and it's hard, it's slavery, meaning it's not comfortable. If a slave enjoys his work, they're not slaves. Or there's an expression that women slave in the kitchen. If they enjoy it, they're not slaving in the kitchen, they enjoy it. The definition of avaido is when you don't enjoy it. And that's why it's interesting you have Limud HaTeda, learning Teda, Eisek HaTeda, the Teda is business, but then you have, by davening, it's Avedas HaTeda. Davening is not called davening, davening, or Eisek HaTeda. Davening in the Pasuk is, how do we learn about davening? In Shema it says, Ola Avdei B'chol Levavchem, to serve Hashem with all your heart, is a positive mitzvah to serve Hashem with all your heart. And the Gemara says, Eiz Aveda Shebelev, what is work of the heart? That's davening. Why is davening called Aveda? And not learning Teda. Learning Teda is called Lima Da Teda, Eisaka Teda. Why davening is called Aveda Satkin? So Chassidus explains, Aveda comes in the word Ibud, Ma'abed, with an ayin. Ma'abed is one of the Lamentas Malachas, which means tanning hide. You tan the hide. What does it mean, tan? What's the Malach of tanning hide? You take the, the you shecht an animal, you take off the hide, it's coarse, it's useless, it's filthy, it's impure. You can't use it as it is. So what did they do? In the in in the Mishkan or anywhere else, they tanned hide. Now we have machinery. What did they do in the olden times? They used to take these thick combs and they actually worked on it. They actually simply brought, simply said they tortured the hide. They tortured the hide to make it refined. That's the Malach Ma'abed from the word Evid. Chassidus so explains, Aveda Satfila means the person's refining his body in Epshabamas. That's not enjoyable. Learning Teda, if you're an intellectual, learning Teda could be enjoyable because you're gaining knowledge. It's, you love learning. It's, it's, it's very, you know, it's a good brain exercise. It's sharpening the mind. Davening, what are you doing? You're not becoming more knowledgeable. You're not becoming, everybody can say, oh, you're a great guy. What are you doing when you're daven? You're tanning the hide of your body in Nefshabamis. That's what you're doing. If you're tanning the hide of the body in Nefshabamis, that's called Aveda. When the Altrebbe uses over here the expression, Toli Bema Asenu Vaveda Senu, Masenu means our actions. Aveda Senu means our Aveda. That is what's going to bring Mashiach. Because what, like he said before the expression, is gashmias. What refines the gashmias with effort, with work, ma'abed. That's mamish, what refines the gashmias. And then it becomes a vessel for for the essence of Hashem. So therefore, the Altareb is explaining this ultimate completion of Dira B'tachtenu, which will be when Mesim, and the flat, he says, Tchis HaMesim, because the first era, the first 40 years, the world is going to be normal. After 40 years, Tchis HaMesim is done, and everybody's up, then the world is going to be in a supernatural level. Okay, that's it for now. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, again, is Chumash uh, class is coming Monday. Um, and everybody have a great Shabbos.
and a great week, and we should only hear good news in Eretz Yisrael.